I want you to imagine that you have an employee who's actually performing really well, but he's also got some really bad habits. So he comes in late, maybe he leaves early sometimes, he takes longer lunch breaks, he watches Netflix or YouTube during working hours. With a poor performer, this would actually be relatively easy to manage. But in this scenario, the employee is a good performer. And the problem is that you're concerned how this kind of behavior impacts the rest of the team, some of whom don't perform as well as this guy. So how do you resolve this issue? In this video, I'll give you the word for word script that millennials and Gen Zs respond to the most. We'll break the script down sentence by sentence and I'll explain why this type of communication is actually really powerful. And then we'll analyze it and tie it back into one of the main motivating factors for millennials, which is purpose. So stick around. I was actually discussing this with one of my coaching clients who's a C-level executive at a very fast growing technology company. We'll call him James for this instance. So James has a small team and one of the employees in his team, which we'll call David, displays these stereotypical behaviors. He comes in late, he leaves early and he watches Netflix, you know, often during the day. So James has come to me and he doesn't know how to deal with this. He doesn't know whether to confront David about it. David's a good performer, Candace, and he says to me, is it worth the risk of confronting him about it? I don't want to demotivate him. But I feel, he says to me, I feel that David's behavior actually invites others in the team to behave like that, even those that are not performing that well. So what would you do? Before I tell you what I think James should do, I wanted to say that I absolutely empathize and fully understand that if you're an old school manager, this kind of behavior would be exasperating for you. you know, it would literally drive you up the wall. And all the executives that I coach want to see people who are focused, who work hard, work's only done in the office, you come into the office early, you leave late. That's the ideal, right? So but the issue that we've got today is that this kind of behavior, times have changed. And this work ethic is not so common anymore in a lot of companies, especially amongst the more junior generations. So this does have upsides with come, you know, more of a junior generation coming into the workplace. There's more diversity of thought, uh, sometimes better ideas, out of the box thinking. But I absolutely empathize if this type of stereotypical millennial behavior drives you up the wall. Often I'm quite liberal with my own employees, but this behavior would also drive me up the wall if I saw it all the time. So the question that I've got from, for, for you is what do you do now that you know that this kind of behavior is actually a fact? You can of course keep battling it out, you know, and you can insist on your way or the highway. After all, you're the boss. Um, James actually, funny enough, told me that he hates this behavior so much that he knows that there are good people out there like David and that he wouldn't mind at all risking the confrontation, literally going nuclear on David. And if David ended up quitting, then good riddance. Now we have the option to hire somebody really good. Okay, so I think that would be a massive upheaval. And I wonder if James actually would have the time and the energy to go through it all. And who knows how long you would be looking for that very special someone who has the work ethic of Elon Musk and expects the salary of somebody fresh out of university. Now, if David doesn't quit, then you may also hear from HR. I mean, even if you're in the right and you've literally done nothing wrong, these days people get offended really easily. Okay, and even if you had to say to David what your boss would have told you 20 years ago or how they would have asked you 20 years ago, something like, you know, you've come in late now three times. Why is that? I can tell you now people might get offended and then you might, you might be hearing from HR or people would go and complain to HR. Now I ask, do you really have the time or the energy to get such trivial issues escalated to HR? 
it's more work for you, it's more meetings, it's less time to do your own work, it's not worth it. So what is a pragmatic solution to this? Here's the script that I suggest you use, and I will tell you why it's so effective. This is what I suggested James actually say to David. So he, uh, he says this, David, I've noticed that you've come in after 10 a.m. a couple of times the last two weeks. I understand that you have a long commute and that traffic may be crazy, but I believe that this is having a negative impact on the rest of the team. Now, what do you think this type of behavior has on the rest of the team? Okay, all right. So I know that this is really strange and some of you who are those straight shooters are thinking, absolutely not. Like, why should I be so nice to this guy? And it does take getting used to, especially if you are a straight shooter like my client, James. And I know you probably are yearning to be a lot more direct, but I, I suggest you resist the temptation and just hear me out. So to dissect the script, let's start. David, I've noticed that you come in after 10 a.m. a couple of times after the last, over the last two weeks. It's important that you are specific. Obviously, you know, collect the data, take notes, so that if David starts arguing the point, you can easily turn around and go, look, David, on Wednesday, you came in at 10 past 10. Then I saw on Monday, you came in at 5 past 10. And then on Friday, you came in again at 25 past 10. I'm not making this up. That's the first part. Next, I understand that you have a long commute and that traffic may be crazy. Okay, so here what you're doing is showing some empathy and understanding to David's situation. Okay, if you know the specific reasons why David might be late, then I would mention them. Otherwise, use this type of generic excuse. It always works really well, even if you wouldn't buy it yourself. This is important and it's probably the hardest bit to swallow for the straight shooters and the direct people like my client James. Okay, the reason is that it actually mellows, ironically it mellows the person out when their blood pressure is already on the up and up. Okay, next. But I believe this may be having a negative impact on the rest of the team. Okay, so this is the crucial sentence. Their behavior having an impact on others. The key here, and this is why it's so effective, is to not refer to your rules or the fact that you personally don't like it or don't agree with it, because that wouldn't be effective at all. The key is pointing to the externalities of their behavior. Okay? And the last bit is, what do you think the impact of this could be on the team? This plays the ball straight into David's court and funnily enough, it forces him to walk a mile in his manager's shoes as the leader of the team, okay, which is actually forcing him to empathize then with the manager. So on a high abstract level, this is the formula that I suggest you use. Behavior plus impact plus question. If you follow this pattern, I promise you, you will have better outcomes. If you point out the behavior, show the impact it's having, and then ask them a question about this impact, watch for their response. The employee, I don't believe, will get defensive. It'll make them think, and then you won't get pinged by the head of HR to come into their office because you offended somebody. Now, here is the main reason why this works so well. I'm sure that you've heard that one of the main motivating factors for millennials is purpose, pa being part of something bigger. There's a few different ways how to message purpose in your team. And especially if you're a mission driven startup, you can use that mission as a purpose to rally behind. But here, what happens if in the situation that you're in, your company actually doesn't have a particularly noble purpose? Say you produce like accounting software or a gaming app. So they're great products for sure, but it's really, really hard to find that special noble purpose behind it, to inspire people. So here's the great thing about one source of purpose that's evident in every company, and that is the team. 
no matter if you're saving the planet or if you're building a CRM pl plugin, literally, no one wants to let their team down. And if you now indicate to the employee that their actions are actually impacting negatively on the team, they will listen. And you won't get this defensive reaction that you would have gotten if you had asked, why are you late? A positive byproduct actually of this approach is that if you give them a backhanded ego boost and make them think that they are funnily enough having an impact on the rest of the team and asking them to contemplate what that impact might be, subconsciously you're actually flattering them because what you're saying to them is, how would you lead the team differently if this was the scenario that you were placed in? So the main takeaway is this, get them to understand the wider impact of their behavior on the rest of the team and ask them how it affects the purpose of why they come into work every day. And even if you are like James and you are a straight shooter and you want to be direct and you want to go nuclear and you want to eliminate this kind of behavior and bad habits from your team, give my script a try first and see how it goes. You can always go nuclear afterwards if it doesn't work. I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any other methods that you believe would have worked and please share your stories. Definitely let me know um, how my script goes if you give it a try. I'd love to hear from you. This is my email address. Um, and if you like this video, then please give it a like and share it on your own timeline. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you soon.